Five runners arriving at the seven furlong start for the second race, the Romanized Minstrel Stakes. This is a group two. Prisoner's Dilemma going in. Real Appeal next. Pedals Galore. Favourite Order of Australia. Dr. Zemp, the final one. All in. Flags up. There are a quintet of runners over seven furlongs in the Romanized menstrual stakes. It's a group two. First to show in front is Order of Australia. Won this last year. It's closely followed by Perils de Lord, tracked by Dr. Zemp. So they race up to the final five and a half furlongs, the final couple. Continuing in these early stages, Real Appeal and Prisoners to Lemon. Order of Australia, Ryan Moore by half a leg to Perils Galore, who's two from two this term. Billy Lee on board, and third is Dr. Zemp and Colin Keane, and then Real Appeal. Shane Foley and Attach, last of the five is Prisoner's Dilemma and Donna O'Connor. Heading for the halfway stage in the Romanized Minstrel Stakes. And it is Order of Australia holding on to a lead of three parts of a length over Perils Galore. A couple of lengths back to Dr. Zemp. They've passed the halfway stage. Pushed along, one from last was Real Appeal with the back marker, Prisoner's Dilemma. They're still in the same order with two furlongs to go. Order of Australia now being asked to try and swat away. Perils galore in the orange cap. They're followed by Dr. Zem, Prisoner's Dilemma relegates Real Appeal to be last of the five. It's Order of Australia starting to kick away from the other four. Perils galore, Dr. Zem next. But running up towards the finish, it's Order of Australia striding out to repeat Romanized minstrels from Perils galore. Four lengths between them, Dr. Zemp and third. Well, it's been a great afternoon for Aidan O'Brien already with group race wins both here at the Curra and over in France. Aidan, Order of Australia, I suppose the obvious starting point. Smashing a horse to have around the place. How pleased were you by that today? Yeah, no, delighted. Uh, Gary's been working very well this year. Uh, he's quicker and sharper this year than he ever was. Obviously, he's, he's a Breeders' Cup winner, mile winner already. Um, listen, he's, he's, uh, he's, 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 he's the last mayor of that, the last uh, foal out of that mayor. And, uh, like, obviously, there's three Breeders' Cup winners in, in, in the uh, last three foals were all Group 1 winners, you know. So um, he, he's quick, he's hardy, he's sound. Uh, He's, um, uh, he's a lovely horse to have, Gary. The plan was he, he started in Ascot without a run, so he got a little bit tired, which he was entitled to, and then was the plan was to come here and go to the Sussex. So, um, no, we're looking forward to seeing him the next time. Uh, Ryan was very happy with him. Terrific. And given his history, obviously, stateside, will he be heading back to the Breeders' Cup? I, I think so. Hopefully, the, the kind of plan is to go to the Sussex, maybe the Moulin, and then head back to the Breeders' Cup mile. So, uh, that's what we were thinking of. It's really good today. And Aiden over in France, Blackbeard led home a 1 2 for the yard in the pre Robert Papa. And did you get to see the race? And if somebody's making it? Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Ritz was very happy with him. Uh, he said he travelled great, quick, and very well. And he was really happy with him. Obviously, it just took him a little bit of time to get it all together. He was still a little bit babyish in that. But he said the minute the g gates open, he's gone very professional. So um, he was very happy with him. And uh, obviously, we were trying to split up the horses. Um, and the other horse came here yesterday. So uh, he's obviously obviously right in the mix for the Heinz now or the Marnie. And will it be a case of trying to divide them up again? I, I think we will. Like if we can at all, it, it makes sense to do that. Um, like they've had their, their preps for, for the two group ones now and, and uh, hopefully he'll come back okay and then we can split them up closer to the time. And have the fillies come out of the Oaks okay yesterday? Yes, very well. Um, yes, the, the second filly ran a Starmer and Ryan thinks that she's not really there yet. He said she's coming, that was her best this year and he thinks there's a little bit more to come. 
uh, Seamus was very happy with his filly. He said, we'll be very comfortable if she gets a little bit more ease. And Wayne's filly, I think a filly in front of her, clipped heels at the top of the hill and she got a bit of a fright and got startled. So she's probably better than that run. So, But they seem good this morning. Can it be anything in mind for them, Aidan? I mean, would any of them be in the mix maybe for the St. Ledger, Emily Dickinson? Yeah, uh, Emily will, will, will get the trip well. We saw her in Leperstown if, if we were going to go that way. Uh, the other filly, Ryan Rudd, could look at the fillies race in Goodwood, maybe. Um, and then we'll see how uh, Wayne's filly is. But like Emily, obviously, looking at her, could be very comfortable at Ledger trip. And we spoke to you after the two juveniles had won the first two races. I mean, they couldn't have done much more. They bounced out of it well. No, absolutely. The horse that... Uh, just got beaten Tipperary, the Franken horse ran very well and Ryan was very happy with him, he can stay at seven or he can step up further and uh, then the horse that won the group race, he, he, um, he won lovely in, in Ascot and we always felt that he was going to be very happy when he went up uh, a furlong or a little bit more so we're very happy to see him doing that with the view to one of the other group ones after that. Aiden, really appreciate your time, congratulations again here. Thanks Pleasure, thanks Gary. Thanks.